So you might have heard this rhythm before. Right, once again by Hang Massive. Um, <laughs> what they're playing here, almost, is a polyrhythmic pattern. One hand is playing one, two, three, one, two, three, right? My right hand, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. While my left is playing one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. And then they reset and they both play together. So two different rhythms happening at the same time within the same chunk of time. Now, let me show you what that looks like on paper, or on whiteboard rather. So, let's imagine we've got a space of time. <laughs> That's what my space of time looks like, right? We've got the same space to work with. If I was to divide this into two equal parts, we would have this count. One, two, one, two, which was my left hand, right, on the, on the hand palm. If I were to divide this into three equal parts, we would have one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, right? So if I were to put both of those parts in, and let's use some different colors. So we've got one hand playing two, one, two, one, two. And then the other hand is dividing that beat into three equal parts, right? One, two, three, one, two. Three, if we were to play both of these at the same time, taking up the same amount of space, that's what we've got. Now, if I were to do that again, but divide, for instance, this bottom one into four equal parts, let's do that a little bit more um, closer to how it actually looks, like this. And we have a different polyrhythm. This one would be the four over three, or rather three over four, I guess. Three is on top of, um, in this diagram. So if I play these threes, one, two, three, one, two, three, and then I bring in this one, it looks like this. Right? There's a different way that you can visualize it um, to find it a little bit easier. I prefer, I think I prefer circles. I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm not sure which one I'm, I'm a, the biggest fan of yet. So that's a, a linear version, but not everything is linear, you know? So let's work, work with a circle this time. So if I were to divide this into a triangle, we would have three beats. If I were to divide it in half, this, we would have two beats. So this example would be the um, three over two rhythm, right? And if I were to play this, okay, so if I were to start with a two, one, two, one, two, all the threes, one, two, three, one, two, three, all together, one, two, three, one, right? There's a, a, a phrase that I like to use to remember this, and it is nice cup of tea, nice cup of tea, nice cup of tea, nice cup of tea, because I'm very British. Nice cup of tea. Now if I were to draw a square, starting from the same point, because we always start with both hands together, if I were to draw a square, it would look like this, kind of. Okay, it's just easier to start from, start from scratch. So this version is gonna be the three over four, right? So if we start with a triangle like we had it before, three points equally divided, one here, one here, one here, and then we have whee, the square starting from the same place because we always start with two hands together. And that one is gonna be like this, right? So it's gonna be one point here, one point here, one point here, one point here. There's our square. And you can see then how close together some of those um, strikes have to be in order to make sense in the rhythm. So if we play the triangle, and then we play the square, 
<laughs> right? Then we've got our three against four polyrhythm. So there's a couple of different ways that you can visualize it if that's helpful for you. If I were to put the two back in, like this, a two against four polyrhythm isn't really a polyrhythm, you're just dividing it kind of the same, right? It would, it would sound really boring. It's when the hands start to land at different moments and then reconnect at the beginning of the space is when we call that a polyrhythm. So how does that look on handpan and what can we do with it? Let's explore. So I've got a Viamara here. If you've got a Celtic or an Amara, you can play the same patterns as me. Oh, and before I carry on, I didn't mention that the version, I, the, the words that I like to use for the three against four is I can play this rhythm. 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 Right? So we've got nice cup of tea, nice cup of tea, and I can play this rhythm. I can play this rhythm. So how do we use that in the context of the instrument? Well, let's start with these three against two, both, right, left, right, both, right, left, right. We can use this to make um, some chord shapes interesting. So say I've got one hand that's playing two notes and one hand playing one, like this. I can split those up. to do is have um, one hand just pulsing on the ding a little bit simpler to explore that. So we're using these polyrhythmic ideas to step away from this usual hand-to-hand -hand, right left right left right left right left all the time pattern and to start to introduce some different ways of playing and ways of exploring so that again you can open up your playing to more possibility. So that's the three over two. What about the three over four? I can play this rhythm. I can play this rhythm. What does that look like? That's fun. So 
There's a very brief introduction to what polyrhythm is, two different polyrhythms that you can play around with, um, and how you can implement that onto the handpan. If you're interested in polyrhythmic exercises to improve your playing in general, I include one in this video here, along with two other exercises, and that's going to give you some tools that you need to improve your technique. I hope you enjoy, and I will see you in the next video.